So we have one of our color sketches. And for this one, we're going to use the same butterfly image, but we're going to do a different type of coloring method. And so what this is going to involve is first thinking about the grayscale values of the image, how the uh, darker or lighter areas interact with each other, and trying to make it work in black and white before it works in color. So we're going to use the same effect to um, use multiply to draw underneath our lines. And we're going to just worry about the grayscale first. And we will use a different effect to then add color to the image. I personally really like using this step in my own art a lot of times. And you saw that we did a lot of value sketches throughout the course so far, just to get a feel for the, the black and white interaction between areas of the scene, the light and shadow. In this, this is just the base, the base color values, like as if you turn the saturation down on a costume, we're not really thinking about lighting right now. But even that can really help you out with making sure that the different areas of the costume work well against each other. Color theory is obviously a very complicated and deep subject that we're just doing like a crash course here about it. But if you ever want to find out more, you can find plenty of resources online to really dig deep. This should give you a pretty good understanding of what, what you can do. If you're a beginner, though, it should get you through what you need to do for the course. So here you can see we changed the filter to the color mode. And what we're going to do now, as you might have guessed, is we're going to actually add color into the image using its own layer on the color mode. And what that's going to do is the grayscale values will actually affect the way that the color gets added into the image. And obviously, this is going to be better expressed when you try it yourself. So give it a shot. But as you can see, pay attention to the colors that we pick on the, the color picker on the left, and then what actually gets created in Photoshop. They're going to have different looks to them. And so the idea with this method is that there's the, the value exists within a color already. Um, there already is dark and light values within color when you pick them on a color picker. And creating the values beforehand so that you have them laid in is just going to help you kind of make sense of, of what you're making and, and possibly allow the image to be more easily in unison with itself, in harmony with itself. So this one's definitely worth giving a try. And so for example, if you lay in a color on top of one of your grayscale values and you think it's too dark or too light, you can either change the actual color to compensate, or you can go back into your grayscale layer and change the, the level of the grayscale uh, to make that grayscale value darker or lighter in itself. So here, for example, I'm making the, the grayscale of the trousers lighter in order to actually get a, a lighter value from that color that I had chosen for them. It's a bit of a subtle change, but if you, uh, if you check back, you can see that it is a different, uh, a different value from what it was before because of the way that the color layer is interacting with our grayscale values. And so if you go to image adjustments and color balance, you'll be able to change the uh, coolness and the warmth of the colors. We can also use hue saturation 
to change the entire direction of all the colors while keeping them in line with each other or the general saturation of the colors. There's a lot we can do of like post-processing for the colors, but this uh, grayscale method is a pretty valuable tool to use because it'll really help you to, to kind of lay out a, a framework for how you want the colors to work before they get added into the scene. And as you can see here, the even though there's a couple little gray spots still in there, of course, it's just an example of what we're doing here. But the general color scheme of our second guy is totally different from what the first guy was, but it still feels like it fits within the scheme of the butterfly that we chose as our reference. So this is a good example of how you can get multiple looks from the same color reference. 